Dearly beloved, all gathered here to the mournful tune of Johnny Deere, we remember a man of music and song who never wished his neighbour wrong. So why are we gathered at this cold graveside to mourn a man we remember with pride? This man who spent a happy life playing for all on his drum and fife. Why did it all end so tragically in this cold graveyard in the town of Tralee? Let us bow our heads in prayer, joining everyone, as we bid a sad farewell to Johnny Patterson. Come on, we'd play the game 
from the Irish man. After the match, we'd sing our songs with fiddle pipe and a brave bar <laughs> Boy, those were the days. School by pals at work and play. A few years on, still swapping tales to ease the pain of making names. handsome young men. Not everybody in this place can find time to chatter and dance a jig. Is that so, Miss Canteen Girl? And pray tell me, if you're so busy, how come you can find time to idle with too fine, hard-walking, <laughs> and mighty good-looking, and music-loving, and girl-admiring men like us? Don't huh? be getting cheeky with me, smart men from Clare. We Kerry girls were well warned when we came to the city of Limerick to stay away from smart country boys like <laughs> Did you hear that, Johnny Patterson? She thinks I'm smart. <laughs> Maybe a bit too smart. What's your name anyway, and what's it like living in County Clare? Young lady from the world of Canteen, this is Dan Murphy, whose humble residence is known far and wide around the County Clare. Well said, Johnny Patterson. You tell her the way it is. All right, sir. There's a sweet garden spot in our memory. It's the place we were born and reared. Tis long years ago since we left it, but return there we will if we're spared. Our friends and companions of childhood would assemble each night near a score round Dan Murphy's shop. And how often we sat on the stone outside Dan Murphy's door. Those days in our hearts we will cherish, contented although we were poor. And the songs that were sung in the days we were young on the stone outside Dan Murphy's door. When the day's work was over, we'd meet there in the winter or spring just the same. The boys and the girls all together, they would join in a favorite game. My father would bring down his fiddle, <laughs> and your sisters, they looked after the store. How the music would ring, sweet songs we would sing on the stone outside Dan Murphy's door. Those days in our hearts we will cherish, contented although we were poor. And the songs that were sung in the days we were young on the stone outside Dan Murphy's door. Back again will our thoughts often wander to the scenes of a childhood home. Both the friends and companions we left there, it was poverty caused us to go. Since then, in this life we have prospered, but still in our hearts we feel sore. But the memories will fly to those days now gone by, and the stone outside that Murphy's store. Those days in our hearts we will cherish, 
contented although we were poor. And the songs that were sung in the days we were young on the stone outside can mark be sore. And the songs that were sung in the days we were young on the stone outside can mark be Well, Carrie girl, what did you think of that? <laughs> well, I suppose Claire doesn't sound too bad, but it isn't a patch on Carrie, especially where I come from. Carrie, and where in Carrie does the uh, handsome girl come from? And uh, if a fella isn't being too forward, does the same girl have a name? I come from the town of Kilorglin, famed all over the world for its annual fair and festival, pub fair. Kilor, <laughs> Johnny, my boy. I don't think we're in this world at all. I've never heard of that fair. Nor have I. Well, you must be the only two in the whole wide world not to know Pug Fair in Kilorgan. Well then, tell us of this fair in Kilorgan. Kilorgan, an old historic town. Kilorgan, Kilorgan, on the lovely river Loun. In the month of August, thousands gather there. The people sing the goat is king of Ireland's own pub fair. My goat. Told us your name. Bridget. Bridget Donahue. Oh, what a lovely name. <laughs> oh, Biddy Donahue, I really do love you. On the go at airs again, John, huh? Hmm. <coughs> You're a terror with those songs. Tell me, do you make one up about everything you do? I suppose so, then. The words in airs. They come easy to me. Huh. And does anything seem to enter your mind about that cranky manager, Mr. O'Leary? Nothing too polite. Oh. <laughs> 
keep your eyes out for Jack O'Leary. Just remember who's the boss. Hammer those nails out until you're weary, or your job will be at a loss. Look at the workers at their benches, working all those iron bars. Jack O wants as many nails that'll stretch to the sky and nail those stars. Jack, Jack, Jack O'Leary, a tick and a tack to make nails galore. Jack, Jack, Jack O'Leary, I love to nail him to the floor. Jack, Jack, Jack O'Leary, a tick and a tack to make nails galore. Jack, Jack, Jack O'Leary, I love to nail him to the floor. John, John, Johnny Patterson, I've heard what you said about me and the floor. Take your bags, here's your papers. You need a new job, son, that's for sure. Jack! Ah, come on, boss, we're only messing. So you know we're workers, good and true. If you sack us, no one will hire us. There's no one who works as hard for you. Take your bags and take your papers. Your fooling around's no good to me. Discipline, that's what you need. The army, that's the place to be. Jack, Jack, Jack O'Leary. Now what made him so full of fight? Jack, Jack, Jack O'Leary. You can hammer your nails right out of sight. John, John. Never mind, boy, jack has got the right idea. John, John, never mind, boy, things will get better, never fear. Off we go to the army, it's better than this place anyway. Off we go to the army, the army life begins today. Off we go to the army, it's better than this place anyway. Off we go to the army, the army life begins today. Sure, Dan. Are you sure? Is is this the life we now pursue? Yeah. <sighs> what if there's fighting? We might have to carry a rifle. We might have to go to war. Hold on, Dan. Hold on. There's more to the army than than marching the land. We'll enlist in a Kushier division. Yeah. We'll sign on for the army band. The band. On oh, the band. Ah! Lead us on to the sergeant and sign us up for the band. Yeah, yeah, oh. Steady on there, me buckos. So you want to join the army band, do you? Yes, yes sir. sir. Well, first things first. Tell me your names. Johnny Patterson, sir, from Fiegel County Clare, sir. Daniel Murphy, sir, from the same place as him. Well, you're a long way from Fiegel and County Clare now, me buckos. And you want to join my army band, do you? Correct, sir. And what asset would you be now to my army band? What musical experience have you? Can either of you play a musical instrument? <laughs> yes. Can we play? <laughs> Can we play? Yes, so you had the hearing. <gasps> Johnny Patterson, sir. Yes. Johnny Patterson can play everything upon anything you can put in his mouth. If you can bang it, if you can blow it, pull it or strangle it, Johnny Patterson can play it. That's a mighty boast altogether. And what about you? Me? Well, um, my talents are a little bit more concentrated. But I'm a damn hand upon the tin whistle. 
None better with nimbler fingers than our Dan Murphy. Well, that doesn't surprise me with all the hot air coming out of you. I knew your specialty being the wind department. <laughs> so, I have here a pair of buckos. Want to join the army band. One claims he can play just about everything. <coughs> and this other one claims he can hardly play anything. Now, I'm afraid it's time to find out what she can or can't do. Because as I look at my trusty chronometer here, I see it's time for the marching drill. You two fall in with the music. That's if you think you're up to it. That should do the trick, Dan. That should do the trick. My father never let me down yet. And what was it you said to him? I said the army life was great, that it had developed my musical talents enormously. 
but that an opportunity has arisen outside of the army which offers even greater opportunities. And pray tell me, John, what is this great opportunity? Look at it here, lad. Lloyd's brother circus has vacancies for musicians and clowns. Interested parties should come to the fairgrounds where the circus will be playing for the next seven days. Oh, yeah. And tell me, will you be going for the musicianship or the clowning? You'll be damn good at both, so you would. <laughs> Why not combining the two? Dan, my boy, you're in the presence of the one and only, the hugely talented, a double delight of music and mirth, the about to be famous, Johnny Patterson, the clown. And what will your father think of all this? Ah, right? fair play to my father, a true northern Protestant who can spot a fortune coming a mile away. <laughs> You're the lucky one, John. My poor old Catholic father would never do anything like that for me, even if he had the money. Soon I'll be a famous singing clown. Will you join me, Dan, my friend? Johnny, my boy, I don't think I'm cut out for that old circus life. Huh? I fancy myself as a bit of a business man. Johnny, my boy, I think this is where we must part our ways. May the good Lord be with you. And you too, Dan Murphy. Who knows where we'll meet again? But wherever it'll be, it will always be with friendship. <laughs> of that you can be sure. So your name is Johnny Patterson, and you want to join my circus. And tell me, can you play any musical instrument? <laughs> can I what? What do you want? A tune in the tin whistle? A whirl of the ukulele? A bang on the drum? Excellent. I could give you a position as a drummer in the circus orchestra. The orchestra? I was thinking of a bit more than that. Uh, were you indeed? And pray tell me, what had you in mind? I was thinking more of the role of a clown. <laughs> a clown? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but that's exactly what I'll be trying to do. You'll be trying to do what? To make you laugh. Uh, a good answer, a good answer. And tell me, if you were a clown, would you tumble around the stage and wear a funny red nose and do all those kind of things? Because I have plenty of clowns who are doing that very successfully. Thank you. No, 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 no. I will be a clown who can sing a song about anyone or anything. I'll pass comment on current affairs, the weather, faction fights, or whatever is exciting or happening locally at each fairground we visit. Where is the owner of the circus? I must speak with him immediately. Hold on there now, Your Reverence. I am Sebastian Lyd, the owner of the circus. And tell me, why are you so excited? Well, Mr. Sebastian Lyd, I must insist that you move your circus from here forthwith, straight away, immediately. And on what grounds do you make this demand? On what grounds? That is the very point, grounds. You have pitched your circus tent on the grounds right next to my church. How can I expect my congregation to attend my evening services and to listen to me while your circus is performing on my doorstep? A person's holy services cannot be interfered with by the attraction of a circus tent. Holiness comes before entertainment. Well, that, that's true, Your, your Reverence, but I If I might interrupt, Mr. Lloyd, Father Brown, you say it's important for people to be in a holy place. Absolutely. When a person is in a holy place, they can come to no harm. Well, Father, can there be any holier place than this? Raise your eyes upwards. You can see the heavens right through the holes in the roof. What? <laughs> why, why, so you can. 
I can see, young man, that you were ready with. And I can also see how your clever play and words can smooth many a vexed question. And you know, Father, if we parked our circus here, we could change our entertainment so it would be beginning just after your religious services. It could work out to our advantage. Double the attraction. Mm, double the crowd. Why, good thinking, Mr. Light. And uh, who is this bright young man over here? I am Johnny Patterson, and I was just... Father, this is our most recent signing to the circus. Johnny, my boy, welcome. A wise decision, Mr. Lloyd. When do I start? Why not right away? You said you could make up a song about anything or anyone. Let's check you. Could you write about a song about Father Brown and his predicament? Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we're going to have the first appearance ever in our circus of a man who can write a song about anything or anyone. We're going to test his skills, the one and only Mr. Johnny Patterson. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. And now, to show you my skill at impromptu balladeering, I wish to relate to you all the tale that took place here today. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the tale of Father Brown. Lloyd's famous circus came today From Limerick City many miles away Page stuck the tent by Riverside Posters hung and banners flew with pride. But before we started our famous show, we were threatened with the approval, approval law. A visitor came in to us, Father Brown, the noble priest so loved of in his town. His face was filled with such a worried frown We pitched right by the church's holy ground Oh, who will come to worship? I heard him say to my holy place In which to, which to pray The circus music will be far too loud the sermon lost to my own faithful crowd. Holy, holy, holy must I speak. A holy place is what we all must seek. <laughs> For the Brown says I just raise your head and hide. You can surely see the heavenly, heavenly sky. All the holes in our great tent Tis the holiest God ever sent Well, says Father Brown I can surely see the light Go ahead with your circus your prayer. All the lands, no grounds to be found in Ennis Town. So let's hear three cheers for Father, Father
Ferry because we have a show that's going to bring you great enjoyment. We have horses to fill you with pride and joy. We have trapeze who fly on the roof so high. We have a one-wheel bicycle which will bring laughs to everyone. Yeah! And most of all, we have the one and only Mr. Johnny Patterson! Thank you, thank you. You know, it's a great privilege for you that I can be with you here tonight. Now, before I begin, I'd like to encourage, encourage someone in the audience to tell me a little bit about themselves. And I will compose a song about them. You, sir, with a smiling face, a beautiful wife, and two lovely small children. Tell me this much. Where did you meet your wife? Was it on the way to work? Was it on the way to church? Was it on the way to the circus? Well, it's such a long story, but... Oh, for goodness sake, Paddy. Don't be shy. Mr. Patterson, I'm a farmer's daughter, and I was out picking potatoes one day when this handsome stranger passed by. He stopped and said hello. And that was the luckiest day of my life. And well said the pair of you. And especially for you, I am now going to compose a song and sing. I have it. Here we go. Have you ever been in love me boys or have you felt the pain? I'd rather be in jail I would than be in love again. For the girl I loved was beautiful and I'd have y'all to know that I met her in the garden where the pretties grow. She was just the sort of creature now that nature didn't intend to walk right through the world of me boys without a Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a chignon, I'll have y'all to know that I met her in the garden where the pretties grow. Says I, my pretty Colleen, I hope you'll pardon me, but she wasn't like those city girls who say you're making free. She answered then quite modestly and she curtsied very low, saying you're welcome to the garden where the pretties grow. She was just the sort of creature now that nature didn't tend. To walk right through the world of me boys without a Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a chignon, I'll have y'all to know that I met her in the garden where the pretties grow. Says I, my pretty Colleen, I'm tired of single life. And if you have no objection, sure I'll make you my sweet wife. She says I'll ask my parents and I'll have to let you know. If you'll meet me in the garden where the pretties grow She was just the sort of creature now that nature did intend To walk right through the world of me boys without a Grecian end Nor did she wear a chignon, I'll have y'all to know That I met her in the garden where the pretties grow That I met her in the garden where the pretties grow That I met her in the garden where the pretties grow Oh, well done, Johnny Patterson. Well done. Johnny Patterson is a genius. Maybe not a full genius, but close enough. Do you know, Johnny, I think that song was your best yet. Ah, there's plenty more like that to come. Where's our, uh, where's our next stop? Our next stop is in County Kerry. We're going to the town of Kilorglin, where they have the famous Puck Fair. Kilorglin? Bridget Donoghue? I wonder if she's there now. Uh, uh, who's Bridget Donoghue? Oh, never mind. Just a pleasant memory from the past is all. Mm, from the glint in your eye, I'd say maybe something to do with the future as well. Maybe. Maybe. Claudine might just be my date with destiny.
up. I don't believe it. A goat with a crown. Ha! Where did that goat come from? That fella, he's a mighty puck. I think they spotted him in the county bounds, but he gave them a right race, and he was nearly in Dingle before they caught him. What a story. People, people, gather round. Citizens of Calardlin, hear my sound. I have a tale which I must report of my ramble round Kerry with the Dingle Puck Gold. I am a young jobber, bought foolish and dairy. The green hills of Kerry I came for to see. I went back to Dingle to buy up some cattle. And wait till I tell you what happened to me. I entered the fair of a Saturday morning. The first thing I met was a long-legged goat. It says I to myself to commence me daily. Be that me all here, or you're worth the pound naught. I made my approach to the dealer who held him. My bargain we struck there without much delay. He said, he'll lend me down 21 shillings. Advice I will give you before I go away. The daring old hero was reared in the mountains. The year 64 he was used for some drill. And some of his comrades and told to part it. And now he's determined some blood for the spell. The old man was parting and I was starting. The words that he told put me in dismay. The first tooth to go could never broke my right arm. So I jumped in his back and got hold of his mane. Says I'm my own ranger and you're back commanded. If I don't fall off, you may go where you will. He ran through the streets like a cookie distracted and soon made his way towards old Connor Hill. We came into friend and I thought it was London. I regretted my journey and I saw the sea. He jumped in the water and swam right across it toward Castle Gregory to take the near way. The waves of the ocean put me in a motion. The fishes they ate all the nails in me toes. A long hit and mackerel jumped up on my nostril and nearly made up with the half of my nose. When he came to the land, now oh, he hastily galloped and towards on the gallop, but then he did steer to Milton, Kalarglen, and into Kalnarny, and never cried crack till he came to Kinmare. It was then that he spoke, saying we'd pass to red quarters, where my own ancestors they always have been. We'll go back to now and we'll take up our lodgings with Kalina Gow, where there's plenty for Jane. He jumped in the face and I fell in the footway away with me goat and I saw him no more. Perhaps he's come back to the place he belongs to, or maybe he's gone to some far distant shore. But if he's alive, he's in camp or in Brandon, away in the mountains of somewhere remote. But while I'm alive, I've a story worth telling. My ramble's from Terry with a lingle puck goat. But if he's alive, he's in camp or in Brandon, away in the mountains or somewhere remote. But while I'm alive, I've a story worth telling. But my rambles from Kerry with an angle popcorn. <laughs> Tony! Tony Patterson, it's really you. Bridget Donahue, my wish has been granted. And you even remember my name. Do you remember the first and last time we met? Johnny, how could I forget? You do? Why, since that day, Bridget, you have never been too far from my thoughts. Is that true, Johnny? If only I knew maybe... Forget the babies. We're here now. Bridget, I've never stopped loving you since the moment I saw you. Johnny, there's something I have to tell you. No, you, you can tell me. Johnny Patterson. Johnny, it's really you. It's you! Dan Murphy, I don't believe it. Look at you. You haven't changed a minute. Maybe a little extra around that waist of yours, but... A little <laughs> extra. No, you haven't changed a bit yourself. Dan Murphy, it's great to see you. And look, look who else is in the town of Killardland. The Puck Fair beauty we met all those years ago. Bridget Donahue. What a coincidence. I've been trying to tell you something, Johnny. It's not a coincidence. Not a coincidence? 
Oh, what do you mean? Charlie, my friend, I think what Biddy means is that she's no longer Biddy Donahue, but she's Biddy Murphy. <laughs> my wife, my pride, and my joy. Biddy Murphy? Your wife? But how? When? When we last parted, Johnny, you went off into the circus life and I made myself way back into the nail factory where I became a traveling salesman and my travels brought me here to Killardland. I had returned to help my mother run the pub after my father died. And before we knew it, we were married. And now, instead of being that fella from Clare, I'm a Kerry man through and through. <laughs> I'm lost for words. Lost for words? Johnny Patterson, this famous singing clown, lost for words? Why don't you give us a hug, Johnny? And wish us the best of luck. What? Oh, but of course. I wish you both the best of luck. Thank you. And when I'm far away, you will never be too far from my thoughts. Far away? You're going somewhere. Well, Mr. Lloyd has been sending reports of my fame to circuses and music halls in New York. I've been given a very lucrative offer to perform in America. I wasn't sure if I should go or not, but now I've finally made up my mind. Johnny, this is fantastic news. My mate, the nail maker, nails his fame in New York. Good. I'm off to organize the porter. Bridget Donahue, you and only you will be my first thought in the morning and my last thought at night. Johnny, I wish I met you before Dan. Mm -hmm. Things could have been so different.
gentlemen, our orchestra will provide you with the music, and our dancers will give you the dance, and the glamour, beauty, and charm is provided to you by your hostess of the evening, Miss Daisy Bell Gilmore. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Can be written preferably in the back of a $5 bill. <laughs> and you question my charm, Sonny? <laughs> Come up and see me sometime. <laughs> now, enough of the chatter and on with the show. Let's strike up the music and here we go! Woo! of Miss Gilmore. Great talent and great excitement. But it's very strange without the circus tent. Please, Johnny, you boy. Never mind the Miss Gilmore bit. The name is Daisy. But don't be fooled by the name. <laughs> I may be called after a flower, but I'm no tulip. <laughs> and certainly no shrinking violet, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, and I'm even a little bit Irish myself, you know. My granddaddy came from County Down. Well, that's a good start. My father was from Belfast, although he moved to Fiacle, County Clare, many, many years ago, and I've been rambling all over Ireland ever since. Hi, Johnny, me boy. That gives me the ideal name for you. Johnny Patterson. 
the rambler from Clare. The rambler from Clare. I like it. Fair play to Miss ah. Daisy. You're more than just a pretty face. <laughs> Easy there now, Johnny, me boy. Oh, flattery could get you everywhere. <laughs> and don't worry about that circus thing. I've been my early career in this business, traveling from town to town with a traveling circus, just like you does. My late husband had all the bright ideas, but hadn't a clue about money. Me, I could carry a tune. <laughs> Tapestry dances, <laughs> couldn't juggle for nuts. <laughs> but when it came to juggling the money, that was a different story. So you were the circus manager? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I wowed them all right, Johnny, me boy, with a pretty face and a pretty face. <laughs> I brought Mr. Gilmore a long way. When he died of a circus accident, I decided to set up a more permanent position here in New York. You know, people work hard by day, but in the evening, they like to come out in their cabbies, have a meal, and come to swanky music hall like this for entertainment. And Johnny, <laughs> if you're half as good as my good old friend Sebastian Lloyd says you are, you'll have him packing in to hear you. I hope so, Daisy. It'll be strange without the tent and the traveling, but working under a roof will be a new challenge. <laughs> you can't stand in the way of progress, Johnny, my boy. Oh, and Mr. Lloyd says that you're a great man to compose a song. Sing one of your compositions. And let's see if it's worth rambling with the rambler from Claire. I never could turn down a request from a lady. <laughs> My name is Johnny Patterson, the Irish singing clown. I left the shores of Ireland come to New York town. I play the pipes, I sing a tune, whatever comes to mind. But my thoughts are never far from the girl I left behind. I met her first in Limerick when I was just a boy. Her graceful movements and her smile to my young heart brought joy. For many years thereafter, I performed my circus show which brought me fame and fortune wherever I did go. I performed all over Ireland. I was known just everywhere. Then I arrived in Killordland for their very own puck fair. I met my friend Dan Murphy. It was only then I knew that Dan had married the girl I love, my busy Donna Oh, Biddy Donahue, I really do love you, although I'm in America to you, I will be true. And Bridget Donahue, I'll tell you what I'll do. Why, Johnny, me boy, that was beautiful. Oh, it's such a sad story. But never mind that Biddy Dunhoo. There are plenty of pretty girls here in New York. Especially in the show business. You'll soon find another Biddy. And a Sally. And a Maggie. Or even a Daisy, if you know what I mean. Oh, steady on there, Miss Daisy. I never could forget my Biddy. We shall see. <laughs> now, Back to business, the seats are filled. Oh, and Johnny, you know, your desire to travel interests me. I have a business acquaintance in Philadelphia who wants me to organize something for him. Would you be interested in going? I just might. I let you know in song when my spot comes up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Music Gilmore Hall where your desire to hear the finest, the prettiest, the very bestest that will leave you in wonder of the plitter of entertainment we have in store for you this evening. You've already listened to the music Gilmore Minstrels singing for you a selection of numbers by the great songwriter of the era, Mr. Stephen Foster. And now, 
The enchanting voice of Selena, who I'm sure will meet your approval. Born in Liverpool, raised in the Bronx, and beloved everywhere. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the singing sensation, Selena! Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Incredible ability to make up sounds and seconds about any subject under the sun. The one and only Irish singing clown, the rambler from Clare, Mr. Johnny Patterson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny has got the reputation to compose a song in a matter of minutes. Mr. Patterson. We spoke earlier of a possible music venture. You said you might compose a song about it. Well, have you succeeded? Indeed I have, Miss Gilmore. Ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment and delectation, here is my answer to Daisy's offer of a spot for me in Philadelphia. My name is Paddy Leary from a spot called Tipperary, the hearts of all the girls I am a thorning. But before the break of morn, faith, they'll all be forlorn, for I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning. With my bundle on my shoulder, and there's no man could be bolder, I'm leaving dear old Ireland without warning, for I lately took the notion for to cross the briny ocean, and I start for Philadelphia in the morning. Then I told the gentleman whom I'd hoped to call my own, and to see my little cabin floor adorning. But my heart is sad and weary, how can she be Mrs. Leary, if I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning? With my bundle on my shoulder And there's no man could be bolder I'm leaving dear old Ireland without warning For I lately took the notion For to cross the briny ocean And I start for Philadelphia in the morning 
When they told me I'd to leave the place, I tried to keep a cheerful face. For to show my heart's deep sorrow, I was scorning. But the tears will surely blind me, for the friends I leave behind me when I start for Philadelphia in the morning. But my bundle's on my shoulder and there's no man could be bolder. I'm leaving dear old darling without warning. For I lately took the notion for to cross the briny ocean and I start for Philadelphia in the morning. With my bundle on my shoulder and there's no man could be bolder. I'm leaving dear old darling without warning. For I lately took the notion for to cross the briny ocean and I start for Philadelphia in the morning and I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning. Johnny Patterson, my boy, it looks like you're going to be a great hit with my audiences everywhere. I heard you going over a tune backstage with Celine earlier. What was that all about? Oh, I was just seeing if a stunning American girl could sing a lively Irish tune from Claire. And can she? Well, you know what you can do there now? Announce us for the audience and let them see what they think. We're going to sing Barney Hare from the County Clare. Hmm. Better keep an eye on that Irish boy. Might take over my show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have already enjoyed our latest addition to the Gilmore Music Hall, Mr. Johnny Patterson. Well, now he's going to entreat you with a song from his very own County Clare. And joining him in duet, our very own lead singer, the lovely Selena. <laughs> Barney Hare from the County Clare to Ireland I was born in I on my boat to pay the boat and landed here this morning And when he landed on the quay he found himself in danger Some boys began to follow him They knew he was a stranger Since one of them give me that stick from me he tried to snatch it So I brought it down in the top of his tongue with a blow that made him scratch it Oh, I'm Barney Hare from the County Clare to Ireland. I was born in I on my boat to pay the boat and landed here this morning. He walked in peace and quietness till he came to the big jet steeple. Says a fella to him, take in your beat and don't be tripping the people. Says one of them, give me no cups, says I, give me none of your Barney. I gave him a cup in the flat of his soap, says I remember Barney. I'm Barney Hare from the County Clare to Ireland. I was born in I on my coat to pay the boat and landed here this morning. And now he can dance an Irish reel for job of journey work, sir. He's got a heart as true as steel. He'll bait the fiercest Turk, sir. In market fairs or at the squares, the latest songs I'll sing, sir. I'm Barney Hare from the County Clare and I'll make the rafters ring, sir. Oh, I'm Barney Hare from the County Clare to Ireland. I was born and I bought my coat to pay the boat and landed here this morning. My Barney Hare from the County Clare to Ireland. I was born and I bought my coat to pay the boat and landed here this morning. Great fun, Johnny. You are going to be a hit with our audience. And I can tell that these audiences are going to be a hit with me. Never in all my days have I seen so many talented musicians and singers. And you tread a fine step to compliment your lovely voice, if I may say so. Now, Johnny, I've heard about your charming ways. You shouldn't be getting so forward. 
You'll start the gossip. <laughs> Was an instant hit. He'd woo the audience with his voice and charm them with his wit. They gathered in their hundreds for every single show. And Johnny's fame and fortune just seemed to grow and grow. Day by day and state by state, he made those western tours. Year on year he harvested the generous applause, but hidden in the happiness of Johnny's bright career, a secret love was burning for the famous balladeer. Johnny and Selina had been working side by side, but who can tell what change may come from the turning? Bell has organized an after show drink at our local. Must not keep the boss waiting. Sorry, I'm late. Were you, were you waiting long for me? Just about all my life, Johnny. And waiting I will be. Ah, come on now. Let's not get too serious.
Look, everyone's here for a good night out. I could use a good stiff drink. Two glasses of champagne for myself and the lady. And a shot of bourbon for me to get me on my way. Certainly, Mr. Patterson. You're new here. How did you know my name? Actually, Mr. Patterson, you're known all over America and all around Ireland, for that matter. Sure didn't I see you and hear you myself many years ago in Puck Fair when I was a young fella. Puck Fair? Are you from Calaglan? Indeed, I am. I left there nearly a year ago, to earn my fortune in the United States. Left it just a year ago. And tell me, do you know Dan Murphy and his wife Bridget? Indeed, I do. Or should I say, indeed I did. Poor Dan died of consumption disease close on two years ago now. Dan Murphy dead? Yeah. And Bridget, how was Bridget? Well, she was fine the last time I saw her. Um, a little lonely, of course, but she's a lady of spirit. Should survive. Quick, give me a pen and a bit of paper. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Selena. Happy birthday to you. Oh, <laughs> oh what a lovely surprise. Who organized all this? It made say so in the car, honey, yes. Happy birthday. My dear friend Selena, thank you for your great love and friendship. Your singing clown, John. Oh, Johnny, thank you. Thank you. I always knew you cared. Oh, John? Well, where is John? Where else, honey, but at the bar? Excuse me, kind gentleman. Do you know a Johnny Patterson? He was here at the bar earlier. Yes, the whole world knows Johnny Patterson. <laughs> he was here indeed. We were having a chat about uh, Killorton, and uh, he wrote this, this note down on a piece of paper, and he scooted out the door like a scalded cat. <laughs> uh, the name, the note is for someone called uh, Selena. Selena. My dearest Selena, I have received news of, of Bridget Donahue. I must return at once to Ireland. I really thank you for the treasured time we had together, but you know that for me, it was always Bridget. Please do not think badly of me. Johnny, your singing clown.
done a fool. I really do love you. forget all the heat from the forge fire, the banging of anvils, and the tingling tingle of thousands and thousands of nails. What nails, Mommy? Tell us, tell us. Did Daddy make nails, Mommy? Tell us, tell us. 
Milo, your father, the most famous singing clown in all of Ireland and in all of the United States of America, started off life as a humble and often lazy nail maker. Lazy? I beg your pardon. That's no way for a flirty servant girl to speak of a fine, hard-working, and, uh, and, uh... Handsome? Thank you. And handsome nail maker. Do you remember the sounds? The excitement? Tell us, tell us. It was just like this. Tonight. Are you are you sure the crowd will still love you? Lots of things have happened since you were last on stage. Since Charles Stuart Parnell has started his movement for freedom, lots of people are feeling very nationalistic. I understand that, Bridget, my love, and I appreciate your concern. I've written a song which I hope will address this issue. There must be room in our hearts for people who believe in all traditions. I've called the song, Do Your Best for One Another. I would not doubt you, Johnny Patterson. Sure, there is never a subject yet that you couldn't put a song to. Come on now, we don't want to be late for the people of Tralee. Ladies and gentlemen of Tralee, Kerry, and indeed of all Ireland, it is with great pleasure tonight that I have the honour of introducing in this humble hall the world's famous star of New York, America, and known all over Ireland as Ireland's singing clown, who has returned to his native sod, and after many years he has agreed to come out of retirement and to make his first public performance since he returned here in Tralee. It is my great honour and privilege to present to you the one, the only, Johnny Patterson. It's great to be in front of an Irish audience again. Now, for my first song, I'm going to sing a song you all know, and I hope you'll all join in. Twenty years ago today, I left O'Leary's shore. I came over to America, as thousands did before. 
All Ireland was too small for me, so away from home I ran. And I come from the county Kerry, I'm a typical Irish man. Trilly, sweet trilly, or the town the children be. Since I was a little boy upon my mother's knee. I love the land where I was born, and I love the famous den. And I come from the county Kerry, I'm a typical Irish man. The steamer I came over in that anchored in New York. Some of the boys from home were there and some from that county cock. I made my way to Old Broadway to see the famous Dan. And I come from that county Kerry, I'm a typical Irish man. Truly, sweet truly, or the town that sheltered me. Since I was a little boy upon my mother's knee. I love the land where I was born and I love the famous Dan. And I come from that county Kerry, I'm a typical Irish man. There was Sullivan, Minahan, Minor, Big Pat, Brennan, and O'Keefe. Some of them came from Dingle and Medilla, Cuddy's Reeks. Foley, Shea, O'Connor, too, and the mighty Brosnan. All of them from Kerry and the typical Irish man. Trilly, sweet Trilly, or the town that sheltered me. Since I was a little boy upon my mother's knee, I love the land where I was born and I love the famous man. And I come from the county Kerry, I'm a typical Irish man. And I come from the county Kerry, I'm a typical Irish man. And now, for my next song, I'm going to sing a song I composed especially for my visit to Tralee tonight. The love of my life, my beautiful wife, Bridget, has explained to me the tensions that seem to exist between the two traditions of our beloved Ireland. My father was a proud loyalist from Belfast. My wife, Bridget, is a staunch nationalist from Kerry. I can understand both points of view. And I ask the question now, why can't we respect both flags? In this world I've gained my knowledge And for it I had to pay Although I never went to college Yet I hear the poets say Life is but a mighty river Rolling on from day to day Men are vessels launched upon it, sometimes wrecked and cast away. So do your best for one another, making life a pleasant dream. Help the poor and weary brothers Pulling hard against the stream Many a bright, good-hearted fellow Many a noble man Gentlemen, gentlemen, please remember you gentlemen Respect both points of view.
Oh, no, no. Johnny's 